So I'm sitting in the passenger seat of my car because I want to demonstrate something to you. I've looked around the internet and I cannot seem to find any videos covering this. So I decided I'd make my own video because I'd done this to my driver's seat because it was driving me crazy. And now uh, I'm going to do it to my passenger seat. So I'm sitting in the passenger seat here now and listen. Those sounds are normally associated with leather seats and you assume that it's the leather that's making the sound. It's not really the leather that's making the sound. It's because the leather is so tight, you hit tight, tight like a muscle man, village people. You look very tight. Yes, tight like a tiger. Yes, yes, yes. Really? Yes, you look like a macho man. Village people. Because the leather is so tight, the foam underneath doesn't really get much of a chance to move. There's not much movement in the foam. It's sort of held in place and it wears away on the bars that are inside. Um, where cloth moves a lot more. It's more flexible and the foam is able to move around so much more that you don't really hear them same sounds from a cloth seat rather than a leather seat. So I'm gonna show you how to fix these um, farty sounds that you get. It sounds like you're farting on your seats all the time. Those sounds i'm going to show you how to fix them now right i'm now in the back of the car and this is the back of the passenger seat so what i want to do is i want to take this panel off and get in at the uh at the, the basically the skeleton on the inside of this so what i need to do is go down here underneath so if you get down under your seat here and follow this piece down you'll find right here there there's a sort of a like hook an elastic hook and over here as well there's another one just right there and if you follow them back you will find that they are hooked onto these springs that are underneath your seat and if you just push it forward off of the spring they'll come off just like that and that's the shape of it there but when you lift it up and look right under here you'll see a screw there and over here you'll see another one Take those screws out. After removing those screws, this just lifts up like this and this whole thing just pulls out. You can see it moving out there now. Sometimes you will not have screws like that. Sometimes it'd be like a long bar and the material will stick into the bar. Um, some other times it's, there's like a zip or something. It's just different in every car. But on my 2009 Honda Accord CU3, that's the way it is. So around about here and here, there are two clips. And if you just put your hand, slide your hand up the back of here and pull, the whole thing will just pop off then. Like this, see? And then that side as well. Oh, now that I have the back of the seat off, you'll see that it just slots down like that. And these are the clips that are holding it in at the top. They hold it into these parts here. And then these are the ones that you'd have to really pull hard or push hard to get them back in. They go onto these bars right here. So this bar here, when you push this clip or pull this clip, you're pulling it off this bar. You can see everything inside that the seat touches off when you move. So all along here, like this part here, like this part right here, if you listen, you will hear when I push against this, it will start to make a noise. So if you can imagine your back would be there, and you're pushing against that, it's rubbing off this bar. And the same in here. Now there are parts of this that are gonna be very difficult to get into. So I'll probably be just using a toothbrush to get in here as far as I can. I'll also be just using a rubber glove with my hand to put the lubricant on as, and try and get it in with my hand as much as I can. Now I'm just gonna sit in the seat so you can see what moves when I sit down. So you could see all of this area here was mainly moving because my back was pushing pressure against this. But along the sides where you couldn't see, the material would have been rubbing off these bars that are up in there. And that's where you get most of your squeaking or your farting sounds. Another place you get those sounds from is here, right where your seat belt holder meets your leather. Sometimes it rubs off them and you'll hear it here. And also along here, you can hear the 
and you can hear the plastic rubbing off of the uh, rubbing off of the leather there. So now we have to lubricate most of these areas. So to lubricate the seats, I'm just using this stuff here that I had in my shed. It's a it's a water repellent white grease. It's for like marine uh, marine and automotive uh, equipment and things. It's basically just for protection against um, you know water or corrosion and stuff like that. But it doesn't have to be this. It really doesn't. You can use Vaseline. You could use this anything that's a lubricant. Basically, you can use anything. I'm just using this because I had it in the shed. That's the only reason I'm using this. I would go for more of a grease lubricant than a, a an oily lubricant because the grease will stay there longer where the oil will eventually drain away and it will fall off and you it'll just come back again. I'm not saying this is not going to come back again, but I'm just saying for now this is uh, this is a great fix. It's worked for me. Uh, it's worked before in a different car that I had as well, so I don't mean this has worked. I mean just a grease lubricant has worked before. If you use an oil, basically when you put it onto the parts, it will just start dripping off and then there's nothing actually um stopping this part from touching this part so it, it will eventually just sort of wear off so you're better off using a grease rather than an oil before i go any further if you like the video please give it a thumbs up because that helps the youtube algorithm know where who will like this video and it'll give it to them and it'll show them and say hey look this is a video that you might like it will suggest this video to them if they are looking for this type of a video so please like the video comment share whatever it is you know and i'm just going to put this all over my fingers and I'm going to get it into the places that are most likely making them sounds. So basically, if I put some in here, do you know what I mean? If I just rub it on that side there and rub it in here. So if I just rub it into those areas where the grease is needed, then that should take away the sounds from the chair, the cloth, touching off these steel parts. And the same in here, you can see that little um, that little nut inside there. I'm gonna try and get my hand in there and just lubricate all around on that. Just like that. Now don't worry about the excess, you can wipe all that away. So you can see that I've been putting it everywhere. It's, it's all over the seat and all, but as I said, you can wipe that away. I've been putting it absolutely everywhere that I think that it, there's more, like this contact compared to some other parts if you know what I mean like obviously not here because there's no contact with the leather itself but on the back of it if I can put my hand in behind it here and just rub along it then that means that I know that that part is a little bit more lubricated like down here where the motor is it's a little bit difficult but if you can just squeeze your hand in like that and just get into most of the cracks that you can with your own fingers now you can see I've got it in there so when that rubs against that it shouldn't make as much noise now I know it kind of looks like there's not much room here to get my hand in, but as you start squeezing your hand in, you'll start to feel the front of where the um, where the chair meets that steel uh, skeleton. You'll see what I mean here. If I start putting my hand in here, you'll see it starts going in towards where the, the front of the skeleton is. So it can move right in there. And I got all of that front part there, you see? And just put this back on. And the same up on the top here as well. If I squeeze my hand in, you'll see I'm on the front of it there now. That's where most of the sounds come from. I feel like I'm doing a prostate exam on somebody. Uh, but uh, this is this is worth it. Ah, uh, that hurts. Uh, uh, that's a part that I can't get to, but I can feel it. Uh, uh, no, can't get my hand in that far. Now I'm gonna just try some with this toothbrush here. So you're gonna get in at some areas that my hand can't get to. As long as it's around that kind of area, it should start to lubricate the parts that I can't reach anyway. Um, it should start moving around and actually getting into these little grooves that I couldn't get to. So as long as that grease is up in there, it should be fine. Okay, I'll be honest, the toothbrush is not really getting where I needed to get. So I'm going to have to use my hand as much as I can. But uh, you can see the whole, the whole process, what I'm doing. I'm basically just 
I'm basically just taking some grease and putting it in wherever I can actually squeeze my hands into to the corners where the leather or the, the cloth meets the steel bars. Anywhere that's touching the steel bars, basically that's it. All right, so that's pretty much it done. Um, all I have to do is just remove all of this old grease now. And as I said, it just wipes off. It's not, it's not too hard to get off. It's everywhere else in the car and it's all over me, but it'll, it'll come off. It's only a little bit of grease. So you just rub it all off the areas that uh, are going to be visible when you put the cover back on. And that's it, you know. You don't, need, you don't need to take all of it off or anything like that because the cover's gonna be back on now and you're not even gonna see any of this. Now just put some more grease around these areas that I just showed you. Basically anywhere that uh, that touches off plastic or anything that will give you that sound. So just rub it all along there. And try and get your hand in there behind it. Yes, it is a little bit sore to do this, but it's for the greater good. And all around in this corner here. The same up in here. Anywhere that touches off plastic anywhere the leather touches off the plastic the same here down beside the seat belt holder just rub it all around in there and then the same here where the, the actual seat meets the plastic in the inside there basically that's it you just sort of clean it all off the off the excess then just clean it all off and you are pretty much done and anywhere else you hear squeaks you just apply it to that area so get all of this excess off just the parts that you can see really. Don't mind going in under where you've already just put it because then you're taking it away. Now I'm gonna sit in the seat again so you can hear that the sound is a lot better and it's not as squeaky any, anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know, I have it on my nose, I know. clean oh in case you didn't know I have merchandise now and um, I did let everybody know at the end of the video of the last video I put a little thing at the bottom of the screen saying I have merchandise now I'm gonna tell you straight out because I don't have any on me but I have some here to show you what I have or you can just click the link down below to go to the merch shop and you can see what I have available so please click the link down below and go buy something in the merch shop Please. Thanks. How do you put this back together? You basically put the top in first and then push these two pieces in at the bottom. So you basically just slot the top in to these three parts here. It'll fall back out easily enough. Right here and here, you have to really, really force this. Camera might fall now when I do this, but you really have to force this in. It is difficult to push it back in, but push as hard as you can. You will not, probably not break it, but just push as hard as you can or punch it, that's what I'm probably gonna do is punch it. There's one in. Now you can see that the other one is still out. It's not going in. There we go, it's in. See, done. Now don't forget the two screws that go in here and then you just hook these back up into the springs underneath. So just testing the seat out here. You can see that there's no no real sounds from the back at all, but. But you can hear that from the base, there is definitely still some sounds there. Um, it's most likely the, the, the wires where they touch off the cloth on the inside as well, the springs that touch off the cloth. It's most likely at that area. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. If anybody does want to see that in a video, uh, please leave a comment and um, I'll take the seat out. I'll flip it upside down and you can see what you would have to do if you were to do this. Please, please, please leave a like on the video and um, leave a comment on the video if you do want to see me flip the seat up and do the underneath part, you know, the, the base part. And um, also share it with somebody that you might think needs to do this to their seat because they have farty sounds and they sit in their seats. Thank you for all of your subscriptions and your likes and your videos and your, your comments and your all that stuff. Thanks very much for everything. Um, I love you all. Bye bye.